Last week we finished sorting out all the rust on the chassis before we start building the box onto the back, but this got us thinking we should probably try and get the van running before we commit too much time to building the box. So we built a lean-to to work under because no one likes to work in the rain, not least Lucy's dad who even rolled to do much of the mechanical work. Taking on a project in the winter comes with a certain set of challenges as we learned when we were building our LDV, but we hope that having a shelter to work under will help us to get more done. When we bought the van we knew that it hadn't been on the road for two years, so when we turned the ignition it just clicked and nothing much else happened. So let's show you what we've been up to this week. Knowing the van wouldn't start, we eliminated the easiest possibility for this by replacing the old battery and the cables connecting it to the starter motor with a new butyl cable and a heavy duty battery. It's all a um, bit corroded up and brush is probably dirty and it's just generally the start motor down there and it's not working very well. I'm just spinning it up just to free it up a little bit. After oiling the ignition barrel, it sounded like the starter motor wouldn't engage, so we removed it for a service and a test. Sounds good. We had established that it was working, so we fitted it back in along with a newer, stronger cable. Before we tried to start the van again, we decided to sort out the rocker cover. Judging by the large amount of silicon someone had squirted all over it, there was a leaky gasket inside. We began dismantling the air filter housing to get at it and remove the cover. Once the rocker cover was off, we removed the gasket and scraped off the old silicon and cleaned up the cover ready to paint. We also repaired the oil vent by brazing around its edges. At the moment, I'm just cleaning the oil off, but because it's so oily, Nothing will fix it. Isn't it? We fitted the new gasket, then the rocker cover on top, making sure to pull all of the flaps from the gasket to ensure a nice snug fit. It's 
So you see this little tab sitting out here, right? With a little hook, just get on it and just pull it forward slightly, all right? That's where it should be. If those tabs aren't showing, it'll leak. It means the gasket's not been located in the right place. All that was left was to reassemble the engine and give it a try. It still wouldn't start and we were at a bit of a loss what to do next. Thankfully, Lucy's dad noticed a loose earth cable hanging in the engine bay and promptly repaired it. That's the old one. The old bit, yeah. Yeah, all the loop gone. He drilled a hole through the bulkhead to give the earth cable somewhere to attach to. He then replaced the old, corroded earth cable attached to the battery too. It's all manky, green, it's not in good nick, it's been outdoors for too long, so we're just going to put new ones on, it's too small, so we'll put a thicker one on, make a better starting. Flash it on first, make sure it ain't live. Lights. Ah. It won't start because there's no petrol in it, but it turns over. Yay! Hey. And don't sound too bad. Unable to trust the van's fuel gauge, we decided to temporarily bypass the fuel tank and see if we could get it running properly. We held our breath and turned the key. We've managed to get the engine running, but this is only the beginning of all the repairs we'll need to make to get this van on the road. Don't forget to join us in the next video.